Hi, I'm Debbie Peverell, and you're listening to our annual video on how to fill in the Ontario TD1 form. We also have video on how to fill in the federal form, um, which you also need to do. If you're a resident of Ontario, you need to give your employer both the federal form and the Ontario form. The Ontario form is much simpler, however, than the federal form. You still need to fill in your name, address, birth date, and social insurance number, but that should be information that's easy for you to come by. Box 1 is the same number for everyone. You will not have seen that with the federal government, but for the province of Ontario, the number is $11,865 for 2023, and it's already pre-printed on the form. 2. The box 2 is about the age limit. So if you're not over 65, you don't need to worry about this box. But if you are over 65, of course, there's some proration involved in this because any age amount in Canada is really only available to lower income earners. So if your net income is going to be $43,127 or less in 2023, then the amount you can claim for an age exemption is $5,793. If your income is between $43,127 and $81,747, then you can claim a partial amount. And there's a worksheet provided which allows you to prorate that. Um, if your income is over $81,747, there is no claim for this age amount, so you can put a zero in that box. Box three is the pension deduction. This amount is only available if you have pension that isn't CPP, Old Age Security, or GIS. So the number is $1,641, and it only applies... Um, to pension other than the ones I've mentioned and of course if your pension income is less than that number you can only claim the amount that it is not the 1641. Box 4 is your disability amount. If you have the disability tax credit that you've sent the information to CRA and they sent back that they're granting you the disability credit then the amount is $9,586 that you will put in box 4. Box 5 is about your spouse. And this is as complicated as Ontario gets around this because it matters what your spouse's income is. If your spouse earns less than $1,007 a year, then you are entitled to a deduction of $10,075. If your spouse has income between $1,007 and $11,082, then you have to prorate it. If your spouse has income over $11,082, you're not getting a deduction for your spouse. So the idea is he here is that you're claiming a deduction for a person you're supporting who does not earn an income. You, that's it for box five. Box six is about the uh, eligible dependent, and this only kicks in if you have a child but no spouse. So if you have a spouse, you can't claim a child as a deduction. If you have a child but no spouse, then you can claim this dependent. And I get more questions about this than any of the other boxes. The question always is, I have two kids, why can't I claim both of them? Um, and the answer is, this is an equivalent to a married deduction, and you can only have one spouse in Canada, so you can only claim one child. And the deal is the same. If their income is more than $1,007, then you're going to have to prorate it the same way as you did the spouse in box five. If your dependent earns more than $11,082 a year, then you're not going to get a deduction for that spouse. Box seven is the caregiver amount. This is a person who lives with you, um, who's child, grandchild, parent, grandparent, and the uh, amount that you can claim is $5,593, assuming that the dependent's income is less than $24,726. And of course, there's a proration available on the form if the income is in between those two amounts. Box 8, the amount transferred from your spouse. So if your spouse has the disability tax credit and no income, they can transfer that to you. If your spouse is over 65 without income, they can transfer the age exemption to you. And if you have a spouse who's in school, they can transfer up to $5,000 of tuition to you if they don't need it to reduce their own income. And the last box is box 9, which is amounts transferred from a dependent, so not the spouse. And this is the same basic idea, um, because what you have is a child, perhaps in university, 
who doesn't need all of their tuition to bring their income to zero so they can transfer it to a parent or grandparent or you have a child with a disability tax credit and no income and they can transfer that disability tax credit to you. So that gives us all of the boxes and once you have numbers in all of them, most of which will be zeros, you add it up and the number that you get goes in box 10. So there's a back page. The back page has a couple of important things on it. One of them is the more than one employer box. So if you have more than one employer in a year, you don't get more than one set of personal deductions. You can only make that $11,000 once. So if you work for somebody for six months and then you leave and you get another job, the another job you get, fill in the TD1 form, tick this box, don't put any numbers on it. That number that should be at the, on the last box on the first page should be zero so that you don't end up owing money at the end of April when you file your return because your second employer didn't take enough income tax off of your pay. There's also a place to put if you would like to have additional income tax deducted, then you can let your employer know and that would prepay some money that goes to CRA and you get it back in April. If you want to pay less tax than is indicated, there's a form. Again, the 1213 form, and you fill that in and you can send to CRA and they will give you permission to uh, collect, have less tax taken from your pay. That would apply if you've got big RSP carry forwards or um, big loan losses or business losses. If you're a non-resident, then typically we suggest you get a tax advisor to determine your tax situation and what you should fill in on the TD1 form. So that's the Ontario form. Um, we also have a federal form, which you could look at for the federal TD1.